Hello, Rebel Gman 10F, and welcome to Week 10's recap. It is, of course, Full Metal. I am back again. I am also riding solo this week. McNaughton is doing some form of important thing. He assures me that it's important, but that he can't otherwise be here. He took a train to get somewhere and hasn't come back. I don't know, maybe he's just got off drunk celebrating after he made plans. Who knows? Anyway, uh, apologies that we're a couple of days late. I've... Everyone in my household has been ill. Like, there's sore throats, head colds, the galore. I'm still a little bit choked up myself. So this isn't going to be the longest recap in the world. We're going to probably aim for 18 to 20 minutes as an average. And I'm sorry for that, but frankly, that's bad all I expect my voice to hold out for. I've already done 10 A's. Um, and I just, I can't get, you know, I, I don't want to talk too much because I don't want to mess up my, my voice for the podcast this weekend, of course. Um, what else was I going to say? I was going to say something else super important and I can't remember it. Uh, anyway, yes, uh, it, it's probably something to, to do with complaining that my entire household is sick. Now, jumping straight in, you can see that Rainbow's Orcs got beat 3-0 by Fairy Harem. Um, and I'm reliably informed that this does mean Fairy Harem have qualified for planes. We're not going to look at the rest... Well, we're, we're going to look at what that means for the leaderboard after we've checked out the schedule. So we're going to go on to that. And there's a lot of draws this week. There's a ton. Everyone's playing super cagey. And there's tons of 1-1 draws. So the Tabard Tellers held Ferry Heron to a 1-1. JP Casey doing incredibly well there too. Uh, and I'm sure they will be very proud of themselves for, for holding, you know, basically one of the top teams in the division to a, to a draw. That's actually a pretty big result. Don't, don't underlook that one. Rainbow's Orcs having a terrible time, though, because they went down 3-0 and 2-0 to Rats back-to-back. -back. That, that That's unfortunate for a Rainbow. That's that's a real shame. Um, directed by me, holding Bernie Buffon to a 1-1. Nobody saw this coming. Literally, the, directed by me have had a painful season. Poor, poor Tommy Wiseau has struggled, and, and he managed to hold Bernie, so I'm assuming Bernie's going to have words to say about that. They, you know, Maybe his diving tackle just didn't hold up. <laughs> yeah, because you're going to see a ton of diving tackle against Undead, right? Oh, sorry, Bernie. I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. Rebel Vikings only 1-1 to the Oslo Snake Club as well. Um, from the Stars, another big result. 1-1 to Angry Alma. Uh, now, that could possibly spend the end of both coaches' attempts at planes. It'll be interesting to check out the leaderboard. And finally, only Falls and Hobgoblins did take on the Bar Stewards and got a 2-1 win. I didn't catch any of these games so I unfortunately know nothing about the specifics so I am sorry for that I feel like a terrible recap of book but life has been very very busy recently um, which is a shame but it's what it is uh, looking at the leaderboard Ferry Harem we're going to look at the points it's all about the points now ladies and gentlemen so we've got 7 wins which is a massive 21 points 3 draws puts up to 24 points so ok that's top you don't necessarily need 24 points. You need to beat second place. Now, second place is currently Bernie with 21 points. And now, Rat Rebel, Crystal Hunter, hasn't yet played, of course. So, we're going to check that out specifically who they play and what matchups at the end. But needless to say, uh, Rat Rebel and, and Bernie going very, very close here. 20, what you said, 21 and 19. Right, so. Like Crystal Hunter has to get a win while Bernie l draws or loses to, to get a chance at this point. Because it's just not close enough otherwise. And even then, that will come down to tiebreakers, which is scary. I don't know what the tiebreakers are right now. I, I haven't looked them up. We will look them up if necessary after that, their matches. If Bernie wins, he's through. Uncontested. Nobody can stop him if he takes the win. If he loses, does that open the door for the Salmon? Let's have a look. 15... 17 points? No, he's too far out. It's just not good enough. You basically... If you're not... No, 17 points there as well. But it's only Bernie and Crystal Hunter in the running now. And Crystal Hunter is not only relying on his own win, he's also relying on a Bernie loss to guarantee him going through, and a Bernie draw would put them in tie-breaker range. If Crystal Hunter draws or loses, it's, it's game over, man. Game over. And it'll be Bernie all the way to Plains. So it's really a, a two-horse race for that second spot with Keith Carr just cruising in happily. Cannot be beaten at this point. Uh, and that's why he's already asked for his MNG clear. So I'm assuming something's missing the missing next game. We will check out the teams momentarily. Everyone else. Finally, good. it's good to see everyone has got a win on the board, which is good. 
Um, some of the teams having done less well than others, but on the whole, it's been a pretty tight race for the top. And the middle, even the middle of the board, got really heated towards the end of the season. I mean, a lot of these teams, if you look at them, like Angry Altma and uh, From the Stars, Only Falls, and Hobgoblins, put on you know quite a mid-season push for the top of the table, and, and just kind of fell out right at the end there. So I've really you know enjoyed that race. We're going to check the teams anyway. Uh, directed by me, Tommy Wiseau. Or Wishawa, I don't know how it's pronounced. Uh, it's still a team. It's got it's got some skills. It's got Dirty Player. Cheap, 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 cheap. <laughs> it's a Dirty Player. I like it a lot. I love Fallen on Undead. I think it's a very, very strong game plan. Uh, it definitely needs more Mighty Blow on his whites. Unfortunately, they just haven't developed as strong as they could. I did not grabbing Stand Firm. I think that's new. So that'd be good. I do like a Stand Firm Guard Mummy. But that's... It's not a terrible... It's not in a terrible spot. It's just... It could do with a little more development on its whites, I think. And it'll be really good. Now, the Rat Rebel. Crystal Hunter. This is an important one, because this is a potential playing candidate. And it's looking pretty good. Full never-level metal. <laughs> it's a bold manoeuvre. It's it's definitely a brave manoeuvre. Sticking me on your team. Because... I my players named after me tend to be cursed, but but I it it did it, 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 it love that name so much. That's made me sin, sincerely happy to see the never level in the center. That's fantastic. Oh, and McNugget still has zero SPP, which is also brilliant. <laughs> but yeah, uh, what a team! What a team! What a player! JP Casey has had a, a massive influx of uh, SPP. Uh, recently, double mighty blow, doing the business for him. Uh, so good, double mighty blow there. Uh, the prioress has been picked up, brand new. I like this team. I think this team's got potential. I think it's in a really great spot for next season. A uh, little bit more SPP. I reckon JP is gonna is gonna be a threat. Uh, there's gonna be some Swiss team who's gonna get this team and go, "Why God, this has got like two mighty blows and a guard. What, what, what do I do with this dark elf team with like?" What? What's that? Th one, two, three, four blodge, five blodge, couple extra dodge. Ah, oh, it's, it's just a nice team. JP, you've done well there. You've done well there. Um, I like it. It's gonna, it's gonna surprise some people in the Swiss, and I reckon JP has a great chance uh, going into the next season uh, of doing pretty well for themselves. Now, Noru, on the other hand, has it also a good team. Uh, I really think he needs to... Now he can't qualify for planes, Noru. I think it's time to fire a drawn captain. A niggled guard white just isn't the business, I'm afraid. Especially because you've got guard on a zombie. Uh, you've got to get rid of that white, man. It's just such a point of vulnerability for the team. And it just... Guard isn't enough. If it was a double... Even if it was a double, frankly. You know, you'd need at least two or three skills on that white to make it worth not firing. Especially with... How good both your werewolves are. Uh, I, I think I think it's it's time to give it the all the yellow treatment, take it out back to the woodshed, and put a bullet in it. But needless to say, in both the Swiss and if it develops continues development through uh, the Swiss into next season, this is a great necro team. This this is a necro team that will go far, uh, and I and I can't wait to see how far. Uh, now Raj and Arashi and the Oslo Snake Club. Uh, it's it's the orc. Oh my god, he's got a strength five black orc. Well, that's gross. That's legitimately gross. He's got a plus movement blitzer now as well. Uh, th this team is going from strength to strength. Uh, it's strength five black orc. It's like a tr it's like a good troll, isn't it? It's like a great troll. I just yeah, get some touchdowns farmed on that to get it block. And man, this team is just gonna be gonna be nasty. I love it. I love it. Big big result there again. Some people are gonna are gonna have a nasty surprise in Swiss when they see Eurasian, and I am <laughs> poor Rimbo. It's, it's just it's it's a nine hundred and sixty team value. Look look what somebody did to this poor Orc team. Everything everything's missing. It's just it's not good. Why you be mean to the Orcs? Weirdly, I don't know what's going on with the troll because it doesn't have it doesn't say it's injured. There's no Kaz symbol. Uh, I'm gonna have to. Flag that for checking it out with the admins to see what is actually going on there because it doesn't have an, an injury, but it's definitely not there. Hmm, that's weird. I don't know what's happened to that one. This one is MNG. Uh, this blitzer is MNG. This blitzer is 
MNG. So nothing is... Oh, I think I remember Spleen Vomit. I think, if I remember correctly, took a minus agility. I think I saw in the bot report. Which is... It's confused the client. Um, because trolls are agility one anyway. And on in this game, you don't die if you hit agility zero. Um, which is nice. Because a dead troll is kind of expensive to replace. and I mean, it'd only lose 2 SPP, but 2 SPP on a troll is 2 SPP on a troll, right? The rest of the team is looking pretty good. Uh, I reckon it's got a lot of potential, this team. Uh, it's just another good orc team. G-Man has a tendency of breeding great orc teams. Uh, I think the thrower outright died, if I remember correctly. Which is why he's now on 0 SPP. Uh, which is a shame. But it is what it is. Contract killers burning before, and this is a this is one of our potential champions. We looked at Crystal Hunt already. We do have a missing Chorf blocker. He's only MNG, so that's good. At least the Shordinator has got Pom. Uh, we've got a Mighty Blow one. He's got the McNugget issue. I, I was talking to McNugget a lot about his team, and I keep giving him grief because he hasn't got enough guard. But now Bernie has only got one guard left, and it's MNG'd. Uh, oh, he's got one guard here. He's got one, one, one guard for the next game, and. <laughs> He's got a player called McNaughton is awesome. I still don't understand that. Full Metal gets it done, clearly. Living up to his... Do you remember what we are talking about? Like, naming a player after Full Metal? Not smart. Full Metal gets it done, has done nothing. Oh yeah, zero. That's, uh, that's wrong. That's the wrong blocker. Let's have a look to see exactly how much he hasn't done. He's had two matches, he's thrown six blocks, and he hasn't even broken armour. However, he's been, he's been sustained the KO and three and four stuns. So, yeah, don't name a player after me, guys. I really appreciate it. It's it's really awesome. But at the same time, my word, am I just... Players named after me don't do well. I think he's going to try and get a, a touchdown on Mercy big deal flush. Uh, try and get him to 16 SPP. That would be so good. And if he can get a second touchdown on uh, his sure hands hobgoblin to get, a, to get both of them block, would put him in a great situation if he was going to planes. But he has to win. So, he can't try and farm... Unless he utterly pitch clears his opponent. Now, Tom about getting pitch cleared. Poor old Hargram has had a hell of a season with... He's very, very broken elves. And he keeps keeping them around, which worries me. Now, we talked about this team in detail uh, previously. And everything I said still stands. You need to sack both the Nigga Lyman and the Strength 2 Lyman. They just need firing. Just get rid of them. Even if you're keeping the team... Get rid of them. If you're not keeping the team well, get rid of them anyway because they're just these are bad players. But it's the rest of the team is it's got some skills. Uh, this Ragnar is really hard to sack. Plus agility tackle what answers incredible. Uh, it's just so good it's almost worth keeping the rest of the bad team. Well, not don't keep the players but keep the actual team going for another season just because ag five ward answers are basically cheating. Um, Martin Septon's angry, angry Altma. It's a hard, hard one to say than you might think. Um, again, just a nice, solid, high elf team. Hasn't changed a ton. Still needs to get a touchdown on his mighty blood blitzer. Because really, 13 out of 16 SPP hurts my eyes a little bit. It's just a touchdown, man. Stop scoring on the on the, the, the really vanilla th catcher and get a touchdown on this fella. Because, you know, second skill, get tackle, suddenly you're amazing. Or get a double and get pile on. We talked in depth last week about a lot of these builds, which is why I'm going a little bit faster through this section. Um, and also because I'm on my own. There's, there's really no one else to, to pair off to try and figure out how fast to go. So, you know, it's all my own opinions. Ooh, Metal rolled a plus movement. He finally got that level up on his Blitzer and rolled plus movement. That's really good. Now I can you can Mighty Blow him from much further away. This is the one player, I think, in both divisions that's named after me that's actually doing well for himself. Which... Inherently means he's probably dead in his next game. Um, because that's just how Blood Bowl works. Uh, two players who need a single SPP. So if there isn't Vanity Passes going on. What should really happen with this team. In Rugbar's next game. Is this guy gets the ball. Throws it to this guy. Oh in fact he's a thrower. So he throws it to him first. Gets the SPP. Then the catcher throws it to this lineman. And then the lineman scores. And you get boom boom boom. Three level ups. Everyone's happy. Every and remember, scoring on Elf Lineman isn't a bad thing. Because Elf Lineman are great. Like, natural agility and general access gives you blodge at 16 SPP. That's actually super good. Super strong. Like, everyone hates Amazons because they all get blodge really, really quickly. Elves take a little bit longer but have Agi 4, so are instantly tons better. 
Um, I would I wouldn't hate to see a touchdown going through on names, um, and I'm super glad <laughs> that the other catcher with the stupid name <laughs> has turned into them rather than some stupid elf name. So I know it was a sad moment for about when it died, but it kind of made me secretly quite happy. <laughs> um, the last two teams are the salmon, who is a chaff team, of course. And it's a really good chaff team. It just gets better and better. He's, he's gone for the ball carrier route. Kind of understand when you've got a blodge ball carrier. Bl- bl- blodge ball centre. Oh, he's gone for the sure hands route. Leaving his hobgoblins free to do fouling. It's just a good team, isn't it? It's a really nice team. He's been doing pretty well for himself. He's only going to do better as the team develops further, I think. Because chaffs are just like that. Once they get a bit of momentum behind them, they're just going to come out and surprise people with a lot of damage. And... And stuff like that. Now, this is Keith Carr's team. This is, of course, our candidate for play-ins. He has definitely made it. And that's what he wants to get back. His Storm Vermin with 2 SPP called Naomi. He got a double on his Rat Ogre and chose Claw instead of Block. That's uh, it's a choice. It's a choice. <laughs> um, but clearly did work for him because he won 3-0 and did a lot of damage. So... So there's that. This gut runner, it still surprised me that it didn't take sprint, but he's only one SBP away. Uh, this, is a, this is a really nice team. It's got a lot of development in the right places. Um, I still think it needs a dirty player on one of its line rats, but it's what here and there. I mean, this guy's 4 out of 6, so if Natalie gets a rando Kaz from just a block, or you know gets an MVP or something... I don't think Keith will be too sad, and should probably go into dirty player just to give him level up that kind of aspect of his play. I also, he sat on 210k, so it's very much, I think, going to be a choice based upon what he's due to face in round one of the planes, but a team reroll would not go amiss, I think, at this point. Uh, to get him back up to three, I'm pretty sure he shed it for TV advantage. This is a team that I think, I predict Keith is going to do well in planes. I think he's going to win his first game, no matter who he plays, because it's just a team... That can just perform. Whether it'll win the second, because it, you know, you gotta remember that everyone you're going against is a first or second. Well, because Keith is gonna be a first place in his div, he'll get a slightly easier, theoretically, shot at a second place coach from another plane, but from another division. But that being said, you know, this is this is a team that can do the business. So I think it'll, I think it's gonna do well, and I can't wait to see it happen. Now, the final week's schedule, we, as I say, Ferry Heron have already played and, and confirmed with their 3-0 win, and obviously Claw came out massive on that Rat Ogre. Uh, did tons of damage to the Orcs and, and let him get a 3-0 win. The Contract Killers are in a must-win situation, and JP Casey is stood in their way. Now, JP Casey has won uh, some games that we never expected from them, and has drawn some games that we never expected from them. So, this isn't a game you can write off. It's not. It's if Bernie can't go into this game expecting to just win, but he has to win. There's no... If he wins, he's through. So, JP Casey really gets to play Kingmaker. All spoiler right now. Uh, the other Kingmaker, of course, being the Rebel Vikings, who are taking on the Rat Rebel. Um, and they're theoretically two teams that are going to love a shootout. But I feel like Crystal Hunter might try and play this one. There's two ways this is going to go. Crystal Hunter knows he's got to win... And is relying on a result from from the JPKC Bernie match. So I have a funny feeling, because he knows it might end up in tiebreakers with Bernie, he could go all in and just desperately try and ram that um that score up as high as humanly possible. Or scavenly possible, I suppose. But it's it's also must win, so yeah. What what else can I say beyond that? Um Angry Antler is taken on directed by me. Again, this is a kind of not we 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 were out now. We, the, the last three games, well, the last two games, because I, Aragon Bastards have just probably just finished versus Oswald Snake Club, who took a two nil, um, and yeah, uh, well, what can I say? Um, if it looks like a two nil win to the Snake Club, we'll have a quick look at the statistics. Not many out of eight. <laughs> The bar stewards took eight, gave them eight. Um, gave yeah, it's not bad. Eight to five, uh, thirty-four blocks to forty-six. Uh, only one injury, inflicted, non non take, non inflicted by the orcs. Okay, that's a thing. Never mind. Um, and from the stars versus everyone at this point is basically going to be looking just to survive. 
get through the Swiss, get through the planes, go on from there. Um, but yeah, these are the two to watch. These are absolutely the two to watch. And I can't wait to see what happens. But either one, Burning or Crystal, would both be very, very worthwhile um, representatives of this division, I think. And I'll be quite excited to see how it plays out. But anyway, that's us done for the week. I told you it was going to be about 20 minutes. We're just coming up to a little bit beyond 20 minutes. Thank you very much, everybody, for listening. Um, it's all, Like I said, it's always been a pleasure to do the recaps for you. It's been such a close division at the end. It got, you know, it got really tight towards the middle. And, uh, yeah, you've, you've put up a really entertaining uh, set of results. It's been entertaining casting it, so I hope you guys have uh, found it as entertaining, me doing the recapping for you. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how everything shakes out next week. And we'll be back one last time before playing starts for a recap. Maybe just after playing starts, because I think there's already a game set for the Tuesday night. So, <laughs> there's that. Uh, anyway... Thank you all for listening. I'll see you next week. Y'all stay classy now.